Ladies and gentlemen, what's up, BC? Another episode for you of the podcast. I have uh, my friend Daryl here today, uh, and I'm going to be interviewing him and kind of chatting with him a little bit. I always allow my guests to introduce themselves because nobody can do it better than they do themselves. So Daryl, man, what's up, bro? Welcome to the show. Hey, man, I appreciate that. As, uh, as uh, Brian said, my name is Daryl. Um, I run a, a Instagram, Facebook, and a Shopify store under the name Unifier TV. Um, I sell patriotic gear, positive gear. I don't, you know, I don't get into the let's go Brandon stuff. That's, I don't want to be part of a cliche. So I, yeah. I just, uh, <laughs> I stick to stuff that I believe is going to unify folks and make people feel good. That's just, that's my shtick, if you will. So, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all about me. It's pretty brief. I mean, I chose the name unifier TV cause that's what I'm all about. I mean, if, if anything we need right now, it's, it's unity, no matter what side you're on, no matter what you choose to believe in or who you choose to vote for um it all everything that the only thing that's going to fix this is love and unity and any way that we can find that but you know we gotta we gotta take advantage of it hell yeah man i agree what uh so what what inspired you to start that right because i feel like a lot of people want to do that and agree with your message and align with it yet very few people will actually put that into action you know well what did it what did it for me uh I don't know. It just, it just, it's honestly, it's honestly just who I am. And I kind of felt like I was coming up short in life. And I feel like I was coming up short in life because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. You know, uh, each one of us has a purpose. And I think the further we get away from that purpose, we're just going to be spinning our wheels through life. You know, we may have certain achievements, you know, be successful at certain things. But I think if you never really get into that thing you're supposed to be doing, you're, you're, you're not going to be truly fulfilled at the end of the day, at the end of your life. And so for me, I really just did some literal soul searching. And I kind of figured out what is that thing that attracts people to me? What is that thing that I do that makes me feel good? And it, it was always the same answer. My heart, doing for others, uh, my compassion for others, um, always knowing what to say to um, just build someone up, you know? It's always been my strength. Even when I'm having low points, I always know what to say to someone else, you know? And so that's what made me do it. I posted one video um, May of last year. I think that was when the George Floyd thing happened or was it April? Whenever it happened, I posted a video about it. And normally I had never posted anything on any kind of topic like that ever, but it just hit me hard because it wasn't what happened to him. It was the reaction that people had that really got to me because this was right after the, this is like early 2020. So the, the pandemic thing was, it's kind of new, but it was really getting to the point where things are starting to get shut down. Um, and some things were opening back up. They were trying to get to the point where they were letting people have some freedoms. But when that happened, people start running the streets, tearing stuff up and those freedoms were snatched away immediately. And that, and that's what got to me because I'm like, it was a selfish act. What happened to him? If you were in his family, if you witnessed it, okay. I understand an emotional reaction, but if you don't know the guy have nothing to do with him personally, you having a reaction of to that point where you're tearing things up and terrorizing neighborhoods, you're out of line. You're taking it personally. It had, yeah. I can go on that topic forever. But when I saw the reaction from people, the selfish acts, tearing stores up, hurting people, I was like, you know what? It, uh, people are selfish by nature. Mm. You know, and when I spoke in that video, I just spoke from the heart. And I did not expect the response that I got. I mean, good and bad. Yeah. But I've never had any kind of attention like that on anything I'd ever posted. It flew off the shelf, literally. Hmm. Um, and when I saw the reaction, good and bad, I was like, you know what? People were reached just by me speaking from the heart. Why don't I just keep doing it? So that's literally how it happened. I, I don't, half the time, I don't even write down what I'm going to say yeah. when I make a video. I just speak, yeah. you know? And uh, just follow the leadership of the spirit, honestly. And, and I love it. I love it. And that's the way to do it, bro, because, you know, you brought up something at the end there that I think is key that I align with a lot, which is you speak from the heart and you don't write down what you're going to speak. Like I just came back from Montana last week and uh, my real estate company was doing an event there and they flew me out to be the keynote speaker and they gave me three hours. And I said, I'm not going to come with anything prepared. I'm just going to speak for three hours off the top of the dome, you know, and it, it, it's similar because you know, when you do it regularly, now you've been doing it for what, like a year and a half at this point. 
right. you know the difference, right? You know, when you watch somebody who does something that's scripted, that they're reading off the prompter, like our president, <laughs> and yeah, then, uh, right. <laughs> right? And you can't even do that, still, right? Still right? can't get that right. I was yeah. thinking the same thing. <laughs> right. And then like, when you do it from the heart, it just hits different, bro. And you see it, like right. you saw the reaction in your very first video, right? So that video, uh, you know, like you said, good and bad takes off, right? Was it right away you're like, I'm doing this? Or was that like a gradual process that kind of, you know, you slowly started getting into it? It was kind of a process. Um, because once I got over the initial shock, <laughs> uh, you know, of course, you know, when people first start coming after you, uh, telling you how much of a sellout you are and stuff like that, I expected that. Mm. Um, but, you know, some people's words did hit me a little differently. So after deciding that I'm wasting my time by getting in these DMs and responding to these people, I was like, you know what? Um, freedom is just a block away. So I just started blocking all these folks. Like, you know what? It doesn't matter. If you weren't reached, then I'm not, yeah. you're not who I was talking to. So um, I kind of just learned, had to learn how to move on, just brush it off. Hmm. But really, I think what the, I think the second video I posted was I think the guy I can't remember the guy's name. He was he was the guy that was uh, drunk or high outside of Wendy's. The cop, well, cops woke him up and he put on a hell of a fight for two cops, had both of them on the ground. And when he takes off running, um, he had made off with one of the cops guns and shot at uh, the cop that was closer to him that was chasing him. Wow. Well, he missed narrowly his partner who was way behind running after him. He hit him with the um, I think he. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, he did have the one of the cops guns at one point. I think he dropped it, but he did get his taser. Sorry, I want to tell the story the right way. He had the cops taser and he fired that at his face and he narrowly missed. But the cop that was much farther behind, he didn't know it was a taser. All he saw was a spark. He uh -huh. saw the spark go at his partner's face and he retired and he um, shot the um, guy that was uh, trying to get his partner with the taser. Well, the, out, the media outrage, well, you know how it goes. The media, they want to spin it any yeah. way they can. Hmm. They made it a race issue. I was like, did you guys not watch the whole video? So yeah. I found the entire video, the entire body cam video, posted the whole thing. And I kept doing these cut-ins. Hey guys, watch this part, watch this part, watch this part. And I did an entire breakdown hmm. that reached more people than my first video wow. and the same thing, good or bad reactions. But I had to say something. I was like, this has nothing to do with white and black. I'm not going to automatically go to a police officer's side just because I believe in this flag back here, but you got to get it right. You have to tell the truth, right. whether the criminal is wrong, whether the cop is wrong. I just didn't like the lie that was going on. So I spoke on that. And at that point, I realized, OK, this is what I need to be doing. I had always had things prophesied over me that I'm supposed to be speaking to a mass of people. But I'm, I have poor self-esteem. People don't believe it because I post videos. But that don't mean I like looking at myself. I just like what I have to say. Yeah. And um, I, I couldn't see speaking to a mass of people. But I kept having that prophesied over me all my life. And it's like, you know what? I'm not fulfilling my purpose. It's got to be a reason why everyone's saying the same thing. Right. And uh, ever since I started to really take hold of this, I mean, it's, it's taken off in ways I just can't imagine. I mean, mm -hmm. connecting with people like you. Uh, and years ago, I would have never even tried to talk to you because I'm like, oh, this guy's up here. Yeah. This guy's up here. He wouldn't even want to talk to a, a peon like mm -hmm. me. So yeah. I was like, you know what? We don't have to be on the same level to have to build each other up. Yeah. And, um, you know, at, Tremendous respect for you. Tremendous respect for people like Anthony Brian Logan, people who have raw, real knowledge and facts. It's like, you know what? This is it. It is what it is. I have, I, I respect people like that. And um, I mean, honestly, God, I mean, you're, you're, you're one of my, um, I don't want to say idols, but I don't know, heroes. I don't know how to put it. You know, I, I, I take a lot of notes from you, honestly. Um, so yeah, you, you've been a major contributor to how I decided to start building my brand too. I appreciate that, bro. That's awesome, man. And it's good to see you doing what you're doing. Cause I've, I've even seen the evolution just in the short time that we've been talking. Cause I think we originally, when did we connect? I think it was when I was making that series about men and women, I think you had messaged me and then we jumped on your show and we talked about it. Um, which, you know, to me, when I made it, um, like to me, that's, that's like a normal topic. Like to me, that's not controversial. And then the DMS I get right. And YouTube comments on it. I'm like, bro, like, how are you guys having such a hard reaction to me saying like a man is a man, you know, like some of these right. basic datums that me and you or any civil adult, if we just sit at the bar and chat, we would be like, okay. Right. And then just all, all the, all this craziness around it. And what I like that, that you brought up previously to this is you wanted to show the facts, the totality, right? I wanted to show the whole story. And I think that's 
extremely important in what you're doing, but everything in general, because everything has been so chopped and screwed and you're only getting the bite size information or depending on who's giving you the information and the agenda that they have, right? It seems like there's all these layers now to information, dude. So I feel like, and I'll, I'll toss it back to you here. I feel like it's a part of your code too, that you want to be a man of your word. You want to be honest. You want to be forthcoming. You want to be transparent, right? Now, so the question to you is, I believe a lot of, especially men share that quality. Why do you think that's been so lost in today's society? Because it has been too much, it's been too much of the promotion of alpha women. They, this society, this, this generation, you know, whether it's media, musicians, even parents, some parents, young parents, parents are becoming younger and younger. And that's another issue why they're not being taught properly. It's a totally different game now. Parenting is. And, yeah. um, and so I think that they're raising these girls to be alpha and they're raising these boys to be more effeminate because they're telling them that their masculinity is toxic. And so it comes, it comes to a point where people are afraid to be too honest because everyone's too sensitive. You can't, you can't speak your mind anymore. You're easily a bigot. You're easily a racist. You're easily a uh, homophobic and you don't necessarily trash any class or race or um, gender of people, but you speak your mind this is what I believe. This is why I believe it. I'm not saying F you guys. I'm saying this is my stance. Don't push your stance on me. Yeah. You can't even say that. It's like, you have to accept their values, their ways, their ways of thinking, or you're just a bigot. You're racist. You're homophobic. It's like, why does it have to be one way or other? Because if you guys are preaching, live and let live, then that applies to me too. Right. I can live and let live. I can let, I can live as a straight man. And, you know, let women come see me. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> What's the problem? Live and let live. So it's like, it's, it's totally hypocritical what we're dealing with. Yeah. If you don't believe or support uh, the hot topics like abortion and LGBTQ and BL, all that crazy stuff that we've been dealing with for the past two years plus, um, you're a bad guy. Society is completely flipped. And um, that's why it takes people um, whether you have a big name for yourself or not, is everyone's job. I said this in one of my last videos. People, I, and I actually mentioned you, I believe, I think I, think I mentioned you. Um, I said, you have people like Brian Cassell, you have people like a a ABL. And I said, you have people like this that reach millions of people. But if those people that you know don't watch their content, are you really going to have the time to say, hey, watch this video and learn something? What if they don't? You do it. You can't rely on these people just because they have a bigger, stronger, more powerful voice than you. Yeah. That's lazy. You have your, you have a job to do in your own community, in your own home, in your workplace, in your child's school, you have an obligation to tell the truth, speak out against certain things and to do what you can from the circle that you're in. I think a lot of people have been getting kind of lazy. Oh, well, he said it, you know, let them, let them cover that. Yeah. They went to the school board. They said what I was going to say. Yeah. But how many people did they reach? Right. You, you, everyone, it takes everyone. So I, I just, I, with the censorship, man, with, <laughs> the, with social media, with media, I mean, the truth is, is not, the truth is not uh, wanted right now. But you got to tell it anyway. So. How do you navigate that though? Because you have censorship, right? Which has literally destroyed my platforms. Like I look at Instagram and my numbers are down like literally 98.9% .9 or something is ridiculous, right? They're going through and demonetizing my videos on YouTube without telling me. So they used to send you an email when they would demonetize a video and say, hey, we demonetize this video for X reason. Now, as I browse through my videos, I'll catch that they're demonetizing them and I'm not even getting a, a warning or like an email. I have to physically go look myself, right? So between that, people getting triggered and we can say the divisive nature and agenda of the media, you being a content creator, just like me, how are you navigating that in the sense of the balance between maybe putting out the message, but in a way where you can actually reach a certain amount of people to hear what you have to say while not triggering them too much. If you understand what I'm saying, right? Right, right, right. That's actually, I'm actually glad you brought that up because I was actually just thinking about this earlier back when Instagram, I think it was, earlier this year or late last year when they did the big purge when they start shutting down all these conservative um social media pages on facebook and instagram i think twitter too but instagram the most mm. um they shut down thousands of um conservative republican anything to the right they started deleting people's pages without warning 
you know, so after thousands and maybe millions of appeals, they started giving some people their pages back. Some people, I got mine back, but they snatched what 800 followers from me. Snatch, just gone. Wow. So that hurt. So when I came back, I started talking about the same stuff. You know, I was like, you know, I'm just going to, I'm not going to stop. You know, I made a video and I'm not sure how much you do or don't want to say. Um, I know you, you speak your mind. You're, you're real. So I'm not, <laughs> I don't, I never expect you to hold back, but I don't want to say anything that you don't want to make them flag you for. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah. I covered a topic that, re that uh, revolves around uh, HRC, you know, HRC who ran against Trump. Yeah. And what they said she did to a certain person. Um, you know, and it's, it's, I'm trying to choose my words. But anyway, I covered that because I was in a rabbit hole and found some very dark stuff. Then I found this video by Bill Maher where he was making fun of that on his late night show. I'm like, it's out of bounds. Like, first of all, I didn't like that at all. Yeah. It was not a funny thing to joke about. So I made an entire video about it, entire breakdown. It's on BitChute. I put it on Instagram and immediately, immediately, as soon as I uploaded it, yeah. I can't do anything anymore. I couldn't, I couldn't do anything. They had froze everything. They didn't shut me down. But it was a very subtle warning because, hmm. of course, you know, when they're, as you're uploading, the longer it is, the longer it takes to post. I think they're looking at it and I think they were looking at it. And it, I mean, I could not post that for half a day. And, it went, and then as soon as I thought it posted, I mean, I couldn't do anything. Hmm. So I took it down. Well, I was like, you know what? How can I still tell the truth without losing everything again? Because if I start from scratch, how do I, I just didn't want it to start over, but I still wanted to be true to me. So what I started doing was, as opposed to continue to expound on what's on the news, because we have enough of that. We, we have enough people telling what's on the news. Hmm. I was like, you know what? My thing is positivity. Why don't I just plainly tell people, this is not legal. Don't fall for that. This is legal. This is not true. Don't, you know what I'm saying? So as opposed to just yeah. saying, don't get this, or, you know what I'm saying? Anything like that, that's a hot word. Don't get that. I'm saying what the F the is saying it's not true what the cdc is saying is not true i'm giving people stuff that they can't flag me for while still getting the truth out so i'm not i'm not crapping on the hot topics i'm telling you what i'm i'm trying to figure out how to put it i'm i'm still telling you what the raw truth is while at the same time not telling you what decision to make i'm saying make your own decision but beware that this is what the constitution says hmm. and i have not been flagged since i haven't really been shadow banned i haven't had anything removed taken down or anything like that um it's really just a matter of remembering what words you really can't say what words yeah. you really can't type certain things you really can't share there are hmm. other ways to get the truth out without continuing to share the same content as everyone else hmm. just you just you have to be more creative than that and i think that's where everything kind of came through for me in the hashtags that's a that's a major thing using those hot topic hashtags because you know the liberals are searching for certain things so you put those in there even if that's not what your video is about <laughs> you put that in there because they'll find your stuff anyway maybe they'll be enlightened so, so that's what i'll do uh, i'll that's search funny. like yeah. i'll search like systemic racism because i know they're looking for that yeah. i'm looking for gender equality i'm looking yeah. for edgy. I'll, I'll put those crazy hashtags on my videos yeah. and yeah. yeah my views have gone up more since i started using their stuff yeah thank you guys course weaponizing it against them. I love it, dude. So hey. you, you said the word creativity, right? Now, I guess the, the follow-up question I have, because I get what you're saying. Do you ever hit a point where you're like, man, this is a pain in the ass. Why can't I just do it the way that I want to do it? Why do I have to like feel like I'm pinky in the brain trying to like mastermind this way of delivering the message? Do you ever hit a, a wall in regards to that? Or have you just accepted it and said, I need to get my stuff out and I'm going to do whatever it takes to get it out? There have been, uh, depending on the topic, I'll hit a wall. Um, when it comes to this thing, this insert that they want to give you, um, that's a topic I do not want to be filtered on at all. I do not want to bite my tongue on that because, mm -hmm. I, I mean, like I said, you get in those rabbit holes late at night, you lose sleep, but sometimes it's worth it. And the stuff that you find, I mean, godly, man. Um, yeah. I've seen so many different patents that they're trying to put forth, stuff yeah. that they've already put forth that we don't know about. Uh, I'm like, this is dark. Yeah, it, I want to just say it. 
I want people to know the real raw truth and post the screenshots of it. This is public stuff. People just don't know where to look for it. Right. I want to post it right there. It's right before your eyes. Hey, click the link right here. This is it. But I, I just know what that would mean. So what I'll do, I, I, I'll speak on say, hey, I, you know, I found this. You guys should check it out. And I'll leave it at that. I won't show anything on the screen. I won't type the words. I'll just maybe mention it briefly and leave it alone. Um, but it's a, it is a pain when it's something that I feel needs to be urgently talked about. Mm. Uh, and, and sometimes I just really can't say anything on it. Um, like before the whole major iOS 13 and the stuff there, because this, this is the problem. I don't know if I can say this. There's a patent they're trying to put forth. I saw this last year. Three guys, I don't remember what country they were from. They wanted a patent, but uh, they, want the US, they wanted to have a patent um, ex, um, approved for a certain um, uh, electronic thing that they put into smartwatches, smartphones. Well, as opposed to it simply checking your pulse, like those smartwatches do, and all that kind of stuff, check, uh, they yeah. know your lung, all that kind of stuff, your, your air quality. It won't just check that. If you cough or sneeze, it can actually assess that too. Wow. And they assess that your cough didn't have enough wind behind it. Oh, his lungs are jacked. Or if your sneeze had, they can assess your cough, your sneeze, everything like that. They would take that data and send it to certain authorities in your state and whatever. And they said they would have the legal authority to come get you from your house if they determined that you're breathing, you're, all that kind of stuff that's going through your body. They've determined that it could be COVID. They will come and get you from your house. Wow. This is what these guys asked to allow to happen. The boldness is ridiculous. I, the wow. boldness. The problem was it was sitting there and they had been reviewed, it had been reviewed, but it said pending. Hmm. Y'all don't see it to be a problem to just shut it down. So you're considering this. So we don't know. It could have passed by now. So Crazy. that's what that's what gets to me. I wanted to put that out right then. Hey, you guys need to see this. Okay. Well, I already knew what was gonna happen. You can't talk about it. So for me, um, I'm past it now. I literally just let yeah. go of the rabbit holes. I don't get into the rabbit holes anymore. I really don't even really report what's on the news. I honestly just decided to stay within the realm that I'm really good at, just motivating people. Yeah. Trying to help people see the positive side, the truth, stop watching the news, stuff like that, as opposed to constantly reporting on the rabbit hole. We got, we got a lot of that already. Um, and I thank those people for that. But I realized I wasn't that good at it anyway. So <laughs> I just need to stick to what I can do best. Right. And um, so now I don't have as much of a pain anymore. So. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, dude. So how have you, um, cause obviously a, a lot of people and who, who jump to social media, um, especially for the people who are balancing, like, okay, I'm going to do something on social media, but they still have like a life outside of it. They work, they do this. Is this something you're looking to do full-time, right? If you're not already and how have you maybe inserted some entrepreneurial endeavors into this to make it more lucrative for you on that side of it? That's where things have been a little tough. And a lot of that's due to the, I've had, um, two vehicle accidents this year where one neither one was my fault someone hit me uh t-boned me i was leaving work yeah. and the guy just jumped out i had a complete right away t-bone told the car i lost the job because i couldn't make it to work for months got back to work got another car same thing happened well this time it was rain slid right off the road onto the median hit a light pole told the car wow so each time you know i'm having to recover i'm having to you know cover expenses until i start working again so it's been a, it's a couple of major setbacks because I was trying to start up something that I called a uh, hashtag look up mm. to answer your question. First, before I tell you about that, um, I, I would love to do this full time. I would actually love to be able to travel and be a motivational speaker. I would love for people to book me. Um, Cause I really do think that I really do think that when I talk, it reaches people and I really would love to, I really would love to grow based on that. Um, Quite honestly, I'm not even sure how to get that started. I'll tell you the guys, I'm sure I'm not even going to pretend I've started that process because I don't even know where to start. How yeah. do I market myself as a motivational speaker? How do I get people? To, I don't know what to do. Hey, yeah. I want to come speak at your place. Go check out these videos and let me know what you think. I don't know if it's that simple. Yeah. Maybe I should just try it see what they say, but I don't know where to start. But I would love to do it full time. I would love to travel. I would love to just go to places, go to schools, go to uh, colleges, yeah. go to businesses and say, you know, just give people what I have, you know? Um, and I, there's one thing that's really close to my heart that I wanted to start up and getting a 501c3 takes some work. You know, it, it, it I just didn't have the time to develop it with all the setbacks this year. So something I came up with called hashtag look up. 
I came up with it because we have all these child rescue organizations and they do a great job, like Operation Underground Railroad, Deliver Fund, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But we don't really see a lot of the preventative teachings. We get into the rescue part where it says, hey, this is how you go get the kids once they've been taken or watch out for the cartel. We don't really have a lot of preventative measures because you see, mm-hmm. always see the kids in their phone, yeah. on their tablets, whatever. In the, where they're walking down the street in the mall, in their neighborhood, getting on and off the school bus, kids need to be aware of the surroundings. Yep. So I came up with hashtag look up because that's literally what you're doing. You're looking up, you pay attention. So my idea was to bring the kids and their parents. You have an expert talk to all the kids at one point, teach them what grooming tactics look like, teach them how to watch out for big cousin or friend's older brother or uncle in the house or even their own, sadly, sometimes even their own parents. They teach them how to look out for grooming tactics, what's appropriate and what's not. All those things. Then you teach the parents different things. This is what you look for in your community. This is how you watch out for your neighbors. Teach them what they need to look out for from their little worlds and then bring them together. And then we have a master speaker talk to everybody. Yeah. This is what we told your kids. This is what we told your parents. Together, you guys can avoid this. So you don't ever have to be kidnapped. You don't have to worry about, you see what I'm saying? Hmm. Yeah. There's not enough preventative stuff like that. We only want to talk about it once the kid's been gone. And that's not, I don't know, I think more needs to be done yeah. to keep from having to rescue these kids in the first place. Hmm. So um, that's really close to my heart. I'm really big and I'm really am a strong advocate for child rescue, anti-bullying. I love the kids. Yeah. And if I can get that off the ground, I mean, I really would believe I serve my entire life's purpose because I really have a soft spot for the kids. And, um, but yeah, man, if we can, we can talk on here or off here, I would love to be able to get your insight on how I could go sure. about um, just marketing myself as a speaker. Yeah, for sure. We can talk off air about that because, you know, it's a perfect segue because I was about to kind of wrap it up now. You brought up Look Up and, and that project. Is there anything else that you're working on or that you're going to release that, you know, you can plug right now? Uh, you guys, uh, if you guys just ch- uh, check out my Shopify store, um, just search, just search. Either you can go to my Instagram, unifier.tv, U-N-I-F-I-E-R.tv, also my Facebook. If you go to any one of those, you'll see the Shopify link. Um, I'm just constantly uploading stuff to my store, constantly uploading videos. Um, right now, this is my main thing is just con- uh, just creating content, selling stuff in the store. Um, I don't know. Once I start putting out books <laughs> and once I start actually getting bookings and stuff like that, man, I'm gonna have so much more to share. But right now, it's, everything is online, social media, cool. store, you know, check it out. See if you find anything you like. Dope, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on, bro. This is fun. We'll definitely do uh, episode two soon. Oh, we got to do that. I'm, I'm ready. I have so many things I was going to ask you about. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Cool. Yeah, we'll keep uh, talking off air about uh, some of the speaking stuff. Definitely. Cool. I appreciate you having me, man. All right, bro. See ya.